Hello and welcome to the third uh, tutorial in this course of Learn After Effects in Seconds. Uh, in this tutorial we're going to be going through the toolbar, which is this area up here. Um, so we'll just go from this right the way through and we'll go through what each uh, of these things do. Uh, we'll probably go to about there. Um, just a, a, a basic run through of each one just so you're comfortable with what these are and what they do. Because uh, I don't know either. So we're all learning together. Uh, so first thing, let's uh, take this Star Wars logo that we've been using before, drag it into here to create a new composition. That way we've got a something to work with. So Star Wars logo, and there we are, all in the composition, ready to go. So this first thing here is basically your selection arrow. And it, it does the, the brunt of the work. It's just a selector. It's pretty much obvious stuff. And you can just drag stuff, drag it around, click, click. It's your selection tool, basically. Uh, pressing Control Z to undo all that. Uh, and that's all that is. There's a shortcut of V for that. So pressing V will send your, so if I, for example, select this and then press V, it reselects that again. So that's your selection tool. This one here is your hand tool. Um, pretty useful for dragging around the entire composition uh, on your on your screen. Um, it's just to move things around if you want to zoom in up here or you, you, you zoomed in and you want to get back to the bottom right corner, you can just drag the whole thing down there. And that's your hand tool, it's basically just to pick it up and drag it. Um, so I'm going to press V back to my tool here. You can also um, press spacebar uh, to get to the hand tool. Um, and that will, you hold spacebar down, I'm actually holding the spacebar down, you can, oops, well, not too long, uh, it will play the timeline. And that will give you the same result as well. Uh, or you can press H, and that will give you the hand tool as well. This hand tool is just everywhere. Uh, next one is the zoom tool. Um, that zooms. Uh, so if you see the default setting is a little cross, so if I click somewhere, it will zoom in like that. And if I press Alt and hold it down, you'll see a little uh, minus, which means it zooms back out again. And we are back there. So I'm going to use my hand tool and put it back in the middle. You can also lasso zoom. So you can select a region. So I'm just selecting this region here, and boom, and that will zoom right in even here, even closer. There we are. Uh, you can also double click this, and that will reset the whole thing straight into the middle of your screen. That's pretty useful as well. That's the hand tool I double click, by the way. So now we're on to this area here, which is a rotation tool. So having that selected, I can then select some footage and rotate it. Amazing. Um, remember, we can always rotate it here. Shortcut is R, and our rotation pops up here. And again, we can rotate it around itself. So up to you. You can either click this tool or shortcut. I'll do that. Or shortcut W. So if I go back to the start here, I've got my selection tool. Now, if I press W, that opens up the rotation tool, and I can rotate. I'll just keep rotating because it's fun. Anyway, undo that. Next one is the camera unified tool. Um, we used this briefly in the last tutorial, so I'll just quickly show you what that does. Uh, so we, what we need to do is create a camera. Two ways to do it. We can either right click down here and go new camera, or we can go up here to layer new camera. So we'll select that. Uh, just leave these as their default settings. Press OK. Okay, so I'm getting camera and lights do not affect 2D layers. Good. So we need to make this layer 3D, which is by clicking that button there. And that's brought up our, our three dimensional arrows. Now this tool comes into play. So if we let left click, we can uh, rotate around. If we right click, actually, so you probably can hold this down here, and then you get orbit. And basically, that's, that's what we're doing here. And then track, which is panning. And then uh, Z, which is zooming, and that will just do that no matter what I do. Alternatively, you can just leave it onto the unified camera, and that's left to drag around, right to zoom, right mouse button, and middle mouse button to to pan. Uh, we went through that last time anyway, so that's basically this tool up here. And the shortcut for that is C. So if I go back to here, I can just move that around as it is. That's not moving the camera. So if I press C, there it is, I get my unified camera tool, and then I can start to rotate around. Cool. So let's make that into a nice little spot. Let's just put that there. Yeah. 
This is the, uh, actually, do you know what? I'm going to delete the camera, go back to where we were, make that back to where we had it before. I'm just going to reset that there, back to our so as we were. Now, this tool here is the pan behind, it's called. Um, basically, it's the pivot point. Um, so if I select that, you can see this little area here. That is the pivot point. So if I press W to go to the rotate tool, right, rotate around there. Okay. If I select this pan behind, I can move this around and that will then become the pivot point. So I go back to W and it will pivot around that bit. So that's basically what that does. It just changes your pivot point. I'll move it over here, W to rotate and that rotates around that side. Useful. Um, this is your, uh, it's for drawing things like it says rectangle tool, but if you hold that down, you'll get rectangle, rounded rectangle, with just round the edges, ellipse, polygon, and star. So what this do, does is two things. It can either draw a shape, which is the shape we've got here. So if I deselect, and this is important, deselect everything in your timeline, and then you have this selected. Once you have this selected, these options will appear. So your fill and your stroke. So if I was to draw this rectangle, as we expect, it would draw a red rectangle with a stroke, a white stroke of two pixels. I can change this input here, the white, in the actual stroke to say, let's just turn this layer off and turn the transparency off. And there we can see our rectangle with these parameters. So fill of red and a stroke of 28 pixels. We can change this color by clicking on here and just moving it around to whatever you want, maybe sort of like a, like a deep purple or something like that. And that has created a shape layer in your timeline. And it's all it is, is just a shape. And inside here, it's a rectangle with stroke and fills and things like that. Um, I will go into this in much more detail uh, when we're sort of out of the basic tutorial. So don't worry too much about all this sort of stuff. Just, just concentrate on that's how you make a rectangle. Or remember to deselect if you want to create another one. Well, let's say a rounded rectangle tool, but this time we're going to make it pink and we'll draw that just on top. So that will keep the settings uh, of the stroke and I can maybe lower that down. And that's just a simple way to sort of draw. Let's just press V to go back to this tool. Rectangles and, and things like that and circles and stars, for example. There we are. And what I'm doing here is I'm pressing the, I'm holding this down, so I'm dragging, okay? And I'm pressing the up arrow and down arrow on my keyboard and that increases and decreases the points on this star. So I can go right down to a triangle and right up to quite a lot. I don't know what the maximum is, but it's pretty high. Um, you can fiddle with that yourself. And then if I hold down shift, that locks it to a 90 degree angle uh, or the actual angle that it started at and boom, there we are. And I can then deselect and move everything over individually. Can even scale it down, hold down shift to do it uniformly. Put that there, I have no idea what I'm doing but whatever, make that blue, there we are, and it's a strange business card thing. And that's a shape there, so what that's done is created a shape here, which is actually these two together, and this one, which is the background. And the reason these two is together is because I had it selected, so you'll see polystar and rectangle inside the contents of this shape layer, whereas this one you'll just see the rectangle. And you can turn each one of these off and on individually with inside that shape layer. So that's how you make a shape within a layer. The other thing you can do with this, I'll go back to the rectangle tool part of it, is to create a, a mask. Um, and the way you do this is you have the layer selected this time, not deselected. So if you select whichever layer you want to mask and then go to your rectangle tool and then start to click and drag, that creates a mask inside of that layer um, to reveal um, or hide, um, I'll show you that in a second, your footage. So now inside the Star Wars PNG, here we are on and off, I have a mask and there's my mask. It's set to add, uh, which means the mask is revealing whatever you see through it. If I went to subtract, it would subtract and remove uh, where the mask actually is. So they're good options to know. There's some other things here which I'll get into when we do a whole masking tutorial. But for now, add and subtract um, to mask out whatever footage you want. Um, you can also 
move these areas around. You can just move these points just to change it, just to refine your mask if you want to. And again, if you press, here's a little shortcut for you. Let's say you've got your logo, your layer selected. Press M to go to mask and M, M, very fast. It's like a timing thing. So M, M. And there we go. You get your mask options. So that's the path, okay? And that's all the path options where each point is, okay? So if I change that, it moves the whole points that I just changed. This is the feathering of the mask. So again, if I extend this, you see the actual edges feather out, and that's pretty useful for blending layers together. The opacity will just basically lower everything down. Um, we'll get into that a bit later. And the expansion takes this uh, mask uh, line and expands it either way you go choose. It's all very useful for creating things like vignettes and things, um, but I'm sure we'll create one uh, along the line of this course. Um, so that is the two ways, two main ways you use the rectangle tool or the ellipse or whatever. Uh, the next tool here is the pen tool and this again does the very same thing as we just did. Um, so, and it does brushes as well, but we'll get to that. Uh, it creates sort of like a, a stroke if you like. So again, if we deselect so I've got nothing selected and I select my pen tool. I can actually draw, I'm clicking and holding a line. Yeah, it's like a sort of wobbly noodle thing. And you just click and drag to create these, these handles which create a sort of bendy line. It's something that takes practice and you get used to it eventually. And then once you've finished, click the one you started on and there you have a shape layer as we had before, except this time we drew, we've, we've drawn it by hand. Um, uh, yeah, so I, don't know, I have no idea what it is. It's just uh, with the parameters, we've same thing, same thing, same settings. So we can change the color, change the stroke, um, or we can actually click this and remove them all together. So now there's no fill. I just have a stroke, which again, I can change the color of here. So now it's a pink stroke. I can select the shape layer itself and move that around or scale it down just as we did before. So every everything counts just as it was, except this time we're using with a shape layer. Okay, uh, I can delete that. And this, and again, same thing, pen tool, uh, shortcut G, don't know why, just is, G for again. Anyway, and uh, so then we just draw around where we need to mask. Du, 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 du. close it up and that masks out that area there same thing with subtract and add and mm really fast mm there we are and that can do our mask feather and opacity and the expansion and so yeah it's pretty good to fiddle with what you can actually do with that sort of stuff anyway there's your pen tool the next is your text tool and for some reason the shortcut of this is Control t um, I can understand why, because the, the shortcut that T does is actually transparency or opacity. So if I select this layer and press T, that will bring up the opacity for the whole layer. Uh, so we don't want that. We want the T. You can either click it or you can pr press Control T and that will select it as well. So I'm just going to turn that layer off. And here I'm going to just press into the composition to activate the text layer. And that brings up this character tab over here which is our basic settings of what we've got ready to type so we can just type hello everyone back to this tool to move it if i still have this pen tool selected i'll just be selecting the actual text itself so i can select back to the selection tool and move this to wherever i want or scale it uh, or i can change the font size down to 20 or up to 100 which is probably a little bit big which is Drag that back down. And again, we can change the color here. So maybe a dark green and change the leading and all things like that. We can actually auto capitalize as well. So that'll change it to auto capitalization. A fake bold uh, here. So this is basically the character window, which we'll probably get into a little bit later on anyway. But so that's the text tool and that's created a text layer and it's named it for us. So what we've typed here, which is pretty nice of it. Thank you very much. Turn that back on. Just because I like looking at the Star Wars logo, I think that's what it is, I don't know why. But it is a cool logo. Anyway, uh, the brush tool. Okay, this one works a little bit differently. So if we select our brush tool, the paint tab opens up. 
and it gives us a few bits and bobs of paintbrush uh, things which obviously we will get into but I'm just going to show you how this works if I was to have this selected you'd think oh I could just paint on this layer uh, but no nothing happens I will just move it around just as I normally do the way to work it is you need to paint let's just reset, why is it? reset that you need to paint directly into this layer and the way of doing that is to double click your footage so if I double click that that opens up another tab within our composition window called layer which means we're now editing the layer itself within the composition so the composition encompasses everything that's all in here and the layer Star Wars logo is just this layer within the timeline and that's the way you use the paint tool so now I have this little paintbrush thing which is uh, here so I can just draw a little thing here that's great and then I can change the color of course to blue because that's much better down here just under it is your brushes uh, and here's where you can change the actual shape and size of the brush here so there we are and the spacing spacing it is the spacing of the actual so you see some dots there so it, it is drawing dots basically so if you just do that it just closes up all the dots and that's just how it works uh, what else we got in there pen pressure pen tilt does that work yeah not really pen pressure probably need a stylus uh, not a stylus uh, a wacom pen uh, to use that so I'll just turn that off okay what a masterpiece so now if I go into the toolbar the composition itself that is now one layer okay it's all drawn and I can't edit that uh, just like this I can edit it in here or if we go into the actual effects now of this layer we'll see paint and inside here is every single stroke I did inside this layer and here you can actually edit it so if I select brush stroke 13 uh, and inside brush stroke can see the parts too I can't know which one that is maybe maybe eight where's eight oh caps locks is on apologies and here uh, where is it oh there it is so I've just changed the hue so that's eight and inside here each one has got these by the way so this can get pretty pretty complicated and tricky and you know you can end up taking ages I can now change the color of the stroke I've already made um, or I can change the softness and I'll just zoom in a little bit here softness and hardness of the brush uh, again the diameter all sorts of things you might need to do and this one's useful probably not a good example but you can actually animate the stroke by going here so if you look if I move that across you can see that is changing the start and end of the stroke so that's the stroke I made so if I go to 0% there click that to make a keyframe just move forward a few frames and turn that up to a hundred you can see that actually animates that stroke. So yeah, it's a pretty in-depth tool, uh, the uh, the brush tool here. Um, so yeah, you can get pretty artistic with that one. So that's the brush tool. This is the clone tool, uh, clone stamp tool. If you're familiar with Photoshop, it's very, very similar. Uh, so if you select that, again, you will need to double click this layer to activate it. And again, we're in the layer section. And what it does is it can take one part of a of your, of your image or your footage and clone it over to another part which is pretty useful for things like wire removal and stuff like that so if I was to select here it's just picking up I don't know if you can see there's a little cross just down underneath here and it's basically mimicking where that cross is but if you hold down alt you can pick an area that you want to mimic so I'm just going to pick this here click there and now wherever I paint it starts with that R where this cross is so there's that cross and as I move it across it's redoing wherever that cross is so to keep doing that R I need to click in it and then click away click in it click away click in it click away okay. the more you press that we've because we've got a soft brush basically yeah, so a harder brush here a nice small brush uh, make it a bit wider here we go this should make it a little bit more yeah see just making that all over again and I can just do this and I just reclone it. Anyway, that's your clone tool, and again, that's all set in the clone. 
and you can edit all of those back again if you need to within that layer. So I can close that up now. Oh, now we won't. we'll use the we're using this tool here. So this is the eraser tool. Again, go inside to to your layer, and now you can just delete. You can just start deleting all the, the handy work you've done. That's it. We'll just get rid of it like this. Take ages, but I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Okay, so that's your eraser tool. So if you go back into your composition, that has been erased. So if I select this button here, which shows the transparency behind this image, you can see that has actually been erased. Okay, now if we go into here, that is not there. So that is actually erased, so be careful. Okay, right. To be honest with you, I never even use that tool. I just do the images in Photoshop anyway. Uh, and this one is the Roto brush. It's pretty smart, this. I think this is relatively new um, because I'm quite old school and I just Roto using the actual masks, the pen tool here. But I think what it does, if I select it and then I need to go into the layer as well, I get this little green circle and it'll automatically Roto um, where it sees uh, a sort of edges where there's alpha. So if I select that, see it's, it's doing it as I go. If I can select and I can click and drag and draw, and that's drawn quite a perfect mask around here. Just zoom in here, let's undo that. I can maybe be able to get into there, just to get into there. And it's quite a nice way, if you want to do it this way, of creating an automatic mask uh, of your footage. Um, I've never used it for actual running footage, uh, as in video. Uh, I will try it and we'll, we'll run through something on that. So there you go. And that's basically masked that out. So I go back into here, you can see that has actually masked out. So if I turn the FX off, let's let's twirl that up. You can turn the FX off there. So on the layer again, remember we turn the FX off here or we can turn it off here. Okay. And that's basically showing what we've done in that effects. So twirl that down, my effects will be here and I can delete them and we're as were. Okay. And this is the puppet tool. I don't know why this is in the toolbar, excuse me, but it is. It's not an actual effect that you think might be in the effects area here, but it is actually uh, in the toolbar and I'll show you what it does. Um, it's a tricky one to use and will take practice, but it's actually quite widely used and it's very clever. So click that and you'll get this mesh uh, expansion triangles and record options. So, and then you get this little, little sort of pin that you can click. So if I, for example, click there, okay, that's created a yellow uh, mesh pin. Uh, so it's created effects, puppet, and then a mesh, and inside there in the deform, a puppet pin one, and that is that. So if I create another one, you'll see puppet pin two, another one, another one, another one, and another one. That's it. So we have six of these pins. So if I select that, you'll see this one selected, pin two, this one selected, pin three, and so on. So now I can actually move these and it will deform our image. So I can just grab this and it will deform. The reason it's deforming all of this is because it's not locked. And what these do is they lock this down into a, into a mesh. But this area hasn't got any pins associated with it. So it's it's kind of taking, it's guessing what it's doing. And it's a really nice way of creating some cool uh, organic animations uh, within After Effects. But it does warp your image quite horribly there. So you see this kind of weirdness. So, and that's when you'd go into your actual mesh, your triangles and things like that to change how that's all working. Uh, so you can up the triangles and hopefully that will yeah, smooth it out a little bit. So that's the puppet tool. So it's useful for doing things like animating uh, a tail wagging or something like that. Um, and all of these are keyable. So for example, puppet pin, let's go to one. File that down, you'll see position. And there's a keyframe there. If I just move forward and just move it down, you can see that is animating. Uh, so that's all animatable. And that is your puppet pin tool. Again, I'm not sure why it's in the toolbar, but it is. Um, so anyway, that is the basic coverage of the toolbar. Um, I think in the next tutorial, we'll run through the um, effects tabs and the windows here uh, and what they do 
uh, individually, I think we might split those into a few. Um, but yeah, and we're almost there. Then we'll start getting into some individual projects um, using a lot of the techniques that we've run through here and getting a little bit more advanced with them. All right, so thanks for listening. Uh, I've been Matt Smart, so you in part four.